Good morning and welcome to the uh, 8th Calyx webinar. Um, today, uh, unfortunately, it looks like we've got had an apology from uh, uh, Nathan Crookshank from Netco. I was hoping to spend a bit of time today uh, having a chat with him uh, and about the, the challenges that he faced in Tasmania. Uh, instead, I'll be presenting the, the case study uh, that Calyx has worked with for uh, Netco in Tasmania. Uh, so, sorry, got something going on down here. Um, I'll be presenting the case study uh, around around what the work that Calyx has done with Netco in Tasmania. Uh, before we get started, though, uh, this is a live webinar, so it'd be good if you could, uh, if you want to interact and ask questions and stuff. I'll try and uh, get to those along the way. So please make sure that you log in. Uh, on the side, there's a, uh, a chat box where you can add your comments. That way, I can read them as we're going through the presentation and hopefully be able to respond with you at the time that you, you write them in. Otherwise, I'll write them, I'll check them at the end uh, and also uh, get back to you with any, any questions that maybe are directly for Nathan uh, that I can't answer. So please make sure, in order to comment, you have to make sure that you're logged in. So please do so now. That would be fantastic. Okay, so uh, let's just jump into the case study. Um, so Taswater uh, is formed through uh, merging of three Tasmanian water authorities or water water corporations. Um, Taswater is responsible for the entire state of Tasmania, much like the Water Corp at WA is responsible for the for the entire West Australia uh, state. Uh, that includes uh, treating, providing drinking water, treating drinking water, but also uh, treating wastewater and managing managing the the aspects of wastewater. So. That includes collection of wastewater, but also treatment. As, as a part of that, they're also responsible for the for the collection networks, the sewers uh, and and pump stations, um, and odors that 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 come out of that. So uh, that gives you a bit of an idea of of the scale of of Taz Water. It's quite a large organisation, and they're dealing with a lot of complex systems. So in partnership with with Netco, uh, we came into into Taz Water, and we decided to um, analyse. The challenges that they were facing, a lot of odour complaints, especially around the Hobart area, um, but all, all across the state, they were having some uh, some challenges with their current odour control solutions. Uh, and we've managed to switch over a lot of the of the sites uh, and progressively uh, more sites over to the ActiMag product. Um, I really wanted to highlight the capability of Netco today as well. So Netco Netco Pumps and Equipment uh, is a, a pump and equipment contractor in Tasmania. But they do work all across Australia and and occasionally internationally as well. And I'll hopefully show you a couple of uh, uh, examples of that today. So this presentation will give you a little bit of a taste of of their capability, uh, but also the 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 benefits that the product brings to to Taswater. So without further ado, let's jump over into the presentation. Okay. So we're talking about uh, Tasmanian. Uh, odor free so Tasmania an odor free tourism location so uh, as I said uh, Taswater uh, covers the entire state of Tasmania uh, the picture you see behind here is the uh, the uh, South Hobart um, wastewater treatment plant there's a lot of uh, odor complaints that were coming out of this as you can see we've got open open uh, clarification ponds open settling ponds um, also, you know, it, it allows the hydrogen sulphide gas to, to be emitted to the atmosphere. Uh, there are solutions for, in terms of capture and covering types of things, but uh, Calyx and, and Netco's solution goes right to the source of the, uh, of the challenge. And we, we want, what we want to do is effectively eliminate the hydrogen sulphide from being generated in the first place. So the current solu the solution that Taz Water was using before was a uh, commodity grade MHL or magnesium hydroxide liquid. Uh, they were facing issues with that in terms of in terms of blockages in in pumps and tanks. Uh, it was difficult to handle, um, which was a bit of a challenge for for the uh, for the operators. But the bigger problem was that if you have a blockage in the pump, you're not getting any product. You're not getting any any of the chemical that controls the odour actually into the, into the system. So that way it wasn't effective and they were getting odour complaints kind of regularly. Um, 
Common issues with commodity-grade magnesium hydroxide include uh, blockages in, in the discharge of pumps and things like that. It can be very difficult to pump, um, and you can get blockages in the tank. Uh, I'll just play this. It's a quick video here. So as you can see, there's... Um, it's in commodity grade magnesium hydroxide can get incredibly thick and very difficult. That was an open pipe out of an out of, out of an IBC. The challenges are that if you can't if you can't get it out of the container or out of the out of the tank, you can't get it into the process and you can't it it, it won't work. Um, so commodity grade magnesium hydroxide is produced in a different way to Actimag. It is. Actimag is a product that, that is based on a magnesium hydroxide, but it's quite different in the way it's made. Commodity grade, grade magnesium hydroxide is, they take uh, large rocks um, of magnesium oxide and they throw it into a ball mill and, and then spin the ball mill and crush up the rocks into a, uh, in, into a paste or into a, into a slurry. Uh, that produces a really wide surface area, so a wide surface area distribution. So you've got particles that are really big and you've got particles which are really small. Uh, and when you combine those, it packs down really tightly into a, into a bed. So you can kind of see uh, just over that way. Um, yeah, up, up here you can see uh, a, a photo of, of some commodity grade magnesium hydroxide that has, has settled down and packed down into a really tight bed. So when it does, like all slurries have a tendency to settle uh, if you don't agitate them over time. Uh, and this particular one, it, it settled down and because of that particle size distribution, it packs down into a, into a really tight bed that's really difficult to get moving and pumping again. Actimag is quite different. Actimag, uh, what we do is we produce the, the magnesium oxide as a powder and then that powder is then crushed and ground. Uh, so down to a, a, a really, and, and we sift it. We actually sift it through a classifier. Uh, so that way we get a really, really tight particle size distribution that's, that's, uh, that's very narrow. Uh, that way it can't pack, pack down into a, into a really uh, dense bed all that well. Uh, and it also means that the stability of the product, we don't have the really large particles in there that have the tendency to, to, to settle out. So uh, that way the, the stability of the product is significantly improved. Uh, what did Netco do? So Netco, working with Calix, came in. We we had a look at uh, doing a, a free uh, equipment review. So every site we come in and we have a look. Uh, the Netco have got uh, some amazing engineers and, and operators on their site. Um, we work with a lot of them in terms of uh, in terms of doing equipment reviews. So. Uh, Netco and and Calix engineers come in. They have a bit of a look at the at the system, uh, do the do the free review, re recommend some upgrades. Uh, if if none are required, then you know that's great. But um, that way you don't need to go and see a consultant uh, in order to figure out what type of dosing unit is best for you. Uh, it's it's really plain. It's really easy to do. We come and do the review. We can give you an idea of how much it would cost to implement a full scale setup. Um, and hopefully, uh, so in this case, uh, we could use the existing equipment, um, so conical tanks, peristaltic pumps, those type of things, um, and it's, it's a really fast and easy changeover. If, uh, if you've got a system that's set up for a commodity-grade magnesium hydroxide, it's very simple to switch over to a, uh, uh, the upgraded product, the Actimag, uh, for, for better stability, better handling, and better, better reliability. So you can see here the uh, the system that we replaced. Um, this one was, uh, I think, this one was actually a new new install. Um, we've, we've installed quite a few of these sites around around Tasmania. So this one uses peristaltic pumps. You can see there's a conical tank there, so quite a uh, quite a large uh, um, cone angle. So that that way the product, uh, if it does settle, it can drop down and can be recirculated back to the top of the tank. That keeps the product nice and homogenous, nice and consistent. Um, and also Netco uh, designs and builds and sources all of these products. So uh, that way you've got a one-stop shop uh, across Tasmania, but also we work with Netco uh, across Australia in a number of different locations. So we can, we can call on their expertise no matter where you are. You can see the, uh, along with the tank, there's a pumping setup. So Netco and Calix have the capability to design and design, commission and install these, these systems. As you can see, there's safety showers there, so it's fully safety compliance. 
Uh, there's a couple of peristaltic pumps in this specific one, so it gives you a bit of backup if one of the if one of the pumps fails or if you have a peristaltic hose uh, rupture, which can happen from time to time if uh, if if they're not maintained as well as they should be. Um, but the, this solution, when, when installed, it, it eliminated the hydrogen sulfide completely in the, in the system. It means that there's no more headaches for the operator. So this specific one uh, was around that, that, uh, the Hobart South pump station or treatment plant. Um, the hydrogen sulfide was giving the, the actual operators uh, headaches because it was that strong. So uh, with the elimination, with this being put in upstream uh, and treating the, uh, the wastewater that's coming down into the treatment plant, that way, uh, the the hydrogen sulfide doesn't get emitted at the treatment plant. Uh, it's 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 kept within the solution. So the the ActiMag is able to to capture that hydrogen sulfide in the liquid. That way, it doesn't get uh, it doesn't get emitted when it gets to the treatment plant. Um, and also, it eliminated all the handling issues with all of the. Uh, commodity grade magnesium hydroxide systems that they that they had in place that weren't working properly. So the solution uh, ActiMag is a uh, is is a fantastic option for for all kinds of odor control within wastewater systems. Um, Calix and Netco as a as a partner partnership, um, we're able to provide uh, a complete solution for 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 odor control. The, uh, the dosing units, uh, Netco can design and, and modify based on your specific needs. Uh, you can see that there's, it, it scales from very small systems like this one, the, the picture of this one kind of up here, sorry, I keep pointing in the wrong direction, like this one up here. Um, so that, that's just a 300 litre tank, but it of course can also scale up to uh, something in the order of like 2,000 litres or even 10 to 30,000 litres, uh, depending on the application. Uh, usually the larger ones are either trunk mains for, for the large sewer treatment plants, but occasionally they, they, they do get used in industrial wastewater treatment as well for uh, the other benefits that ActiMag brings. So it can be phosphate capture, it could be pH control, alkalinity control, uh, I'll come to those in a in a minute, but there's there's a number of different benefits um, boosting boosting biogas if they've got a, a biogas collection system there. Um, there it could be used as a number of different uh, things in the in the wastewater treatment process, whether that's industrial or municipal. Um, Calix and Netco can also offer analysis of hydrogen sulfide, so odor monitoring units that are dispatched into the network so you've got you can get a bit of an idea of uh, of the uh, the hydrogen sulfide problems within the within the network or identify where there are hydrogen sulfide problems that way it gives you a better idea of, of where the dosing units need to be located the uh, the other thing that Netco and Calix do uh, in conjunction is, is service and maintenance so we do offer uh, essentially complete packages in terms of uh, the the product, but also the the delivery, the servicing, the maintenance of the unit. That way, you don't need to worry about any of it, and you don't need to put in any resources to uh, to maintain or operate these systems. So we can do remote monitoring, uh, and whenever anything goes wrong or the scheduled maintenance interval comes up, the uh, the Calix or Netco um, people will come out and and service those units, um, and it's it's an ongoing process. ActiMag is also very useful for, for other things, as I mentioned before. So pH and alkalinity control. Uh, it's a very it's a, a very strong alkali. The, the alkalinity in in ActiMag is incredibly high, um, but the pH is actually fairly neutral. That way, you're able to put uh, the ActiMag into into a system. You can never over you can like it's very very unlikely that you're going to overdose the system um, and push the pH up because the the, the solution buffers at quite a low pH. Um, that way, if you've got a system that requires alkalinity downstream, so a treatment plant or, or something like that, you can put it in, it can control, control the odour in the sewer network on the way there, and when it gets to the treatment plant, it can boost your alkalinity. Uh, it also works for phosphate removal. So the, uh, the, the ActiMag, because it's got a really high surface area, a very high surface area in the order of about 300 square metres per gram, um, compared to say commodity grade magnesium hydroxide, which has got uh, somewhere between you know, 40 and 60 square meters per gram, the phosphate can actually get inside the particles with that high surface area and form what's called a struvite. Uh, the struvite's like a complex between uh, magnesium, phosphorus, and nitrogen, 
uh, and it forms inside the uh, inside the particle, inside the actimag particle, which is then discharged with the sludge uh, once it gets to the the water, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, that way, you don't have the the phosphate within the liquor or within the uh, the the effluent that's coming out of the top of clarifiers, uh, and you're able to maintain a, a lower phosphate uh, discharge, whether it's into the ocean or, or it could be into uh, freshwater streams and those type of things. Um, BOD and COD reduction. So ActiMag does work as a uh, as an anaerobic process boosting chemical. Uh, it it reinforces the bacteria that do the anaerobic digestion. That way you're able to get um, and this comes to this next point, which is boosting biogas. So with the with the increase in the anaerobic digestion process. Um, you're able to boost the amount of biogas that comes out, but also it reduces the amount of organic load that's coming out in the effluent, it reduces the, the discharge BOD and COD. So it gives you a bit of an idea of the additional benefits that ActiMag has uh, when you're adding it into the, the collection network uh, for, for odour control, but you also get the downstream benefits of the treatment plant. Um, fortunately, there's no negative uh, problems with it, so... The, the product is completely safe um, because because it has a, a fairly neutral pH. It's not hazardous. It's not harmful, non-toxic, and you don't need to treat it as a dangerous goods in terms of storage or, or handling. So that way, uh, th there's no there's no unfortunate benefits downstream, unlike uh, some other chemicals like say a ferric chloride, which has a uh, quite a low pH. So the the product the the actual wastewater can get very acidic or things like um, alum or, or, or other wastewater treatment products can adversely affect the, the wastewater that's going into the treatment plant downstream. ActiMag does not have those problems. To give you an example, sorry, I'll just grab a, a drink of water. I've been talking for a little while. To give you an example of, uh, of how well the ActiMag product works to, for odour control, this is an example here of... Uh, the before and after. So beforehand, this system was actually using ferric chloride. So even with ferric chloride in, you can see that the, uh, the hydrogen sulfide levels were, were spiking up to above 100 parts per million, which is a bit of a problem for the, for the operators downstream, but also it causes problems with odour complaints. So customers are gonna, gonna complain about um, odour that's being emitted out of pump stations and, and, uh, and manholes. Uh, and then you have to install expensive filters and, and make sure you maintain those filters, charcoal filters or, or those little um, uh, manhole mounted filters. So it can get very expensive um, and uh, a, a bit of a challenge if you use the wrong chemical. So uh, so we started the uh, the dosing of the ActiMag on this specific system and it dropped to zero. The, the hydrogen sulfide dropped to zero essentially immediately. Uh, you can see that the uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of this first line up up here, sorry, this is where we uh, started adding the ActiMag, and the uh, the line over here is the is after the the ActiMag has been running for a while. So it essentially dropped to zero. This is another example. Uh, this one was uh, where was this? Southern New South Wales. It was the Southern New South Wales Council. They were using calcium nitrate, uh, which is a, an, another type of chemical that you can use for, for capturing that hydrogen sulfide. Uh, again, it captures the, the ferric chloride and the calcium nitrates designed to let the hydrogen sulfide be emitted, but then capture it in a, in a different form. So, um, so this calcium, you can see that the calcium nitrate before they were they were running it, it was uh, they were running the old calcium nitrate. Uh, you can see the hydrogen sulfide was on average about 20 to 25 parts per million, spiking up to 100 occasionally, usually spiking up to about 50. Uh, we we decided for this trial we'd, we'd switch off the system. You can see that with the uh, with no chemical control, this specific system. Uh, was horrendous in terms of hydrogen sulfide emissions. Uh, this one was running into a, um, a treatment, oh, not a treatment plant. It was a pump station that was in a depot. So the uh, the council operators had had you know major problems with this one. Uh, the hydrogen sulfide levels are up at 250 to 300 parts per million, which is it's getting up to the really dangerous areas where if you have an enclosed space, people can have have really uh, big problems with uh, breathing in those in those areas. 
Uh, we added the Actimag and the hydrogen sulfide levels essentially like not didn't drop to zero in this case, but they, they dropped well below 10 parts per million, which is uh, within the acceptable limits. Um, and uh, that way it, it provided a, 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 a fantastic solution at the same cost uh, as, uh, say, the calcium nitrate, uh, but also it's, it's much more effective in what it does. Uh, Actimag is the uh, the cheapest alkali in terms of uh, per, per megalitre for pH control and alkalinity control. So uh, if you if you compare it against uh, say something like um, uh, bicarb soda or, or soda ash, uh, it can look a little bit expensive if you compare it in terms of dollars per kilogram of product. But if you work out how much you actually need to add into a uh, into a wastewater system or into a wastewater treatment process. Um, the the amount of Actimag you need to add is significantly less. So, if you if you work it out on a uh, a cost per megalitre of, of wastewater treated uh, basis, the the Actimag is the cheapest alkali that you can get on the market. Much lower usage than than caustic. So it's about a sixty percent um, about sixty percent of the uh, of the product that you need to use in terms of Actimag compared to caustic, uh, and and. It's much better than that when it comes to soda ash and, and other products. It's completely safe, so you can actually drink this stuff. Uh, it's, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it because it tastes like rubbish. But um, uh, it is, it's just a magnesium hydroxide-based product, uh, much like uh, Mylanta that's used to settle your, your stomach after you've had a you know, big meal or something. Um, it, that way it's completely safe. It's non-hazardous. It's non-toxic. Uh, that way you don't need to... Um, handle it as a, as a hazardous chemical. And, uh, and critically, um, the, the way that Calex and Netco have set up our business is that we've got experts all across Australia and they're familiar with the product. So we've got experts in the local area that can help you convert over to Actimag um, if, you're, if you're using a commodity grade magnesium hydroxide or if you've got other chemicals, whether it's a calcium nitrate, ferric chloride, we've got the experts on hand that can, that can help you switch over. Oop, wrong way, sorry. So, Tasmania, Actimag and Netco uh, now service all of Tasmania in terms of the odour control. We've got sites at, uh, at 14 cities and towns across Tasmania um, to eliminate odours, and that maximises tourism. Um, people don't want to go to a place that, that stinks, and Tasmania is one of the most pristine places on the planet. It's it's, uh, it's wildlife and its forests are amazing. So you don't want to interrupt that with some kind of hydrogen sulfide emission from a wastewater network. Um, so Netco, along with Calex, have, have really come in and stepped up and solved this problem for, uh, for the, all the cities and towns across Tasmania that have had those, those challenges. We haven't, obviously, we haven't, um, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> obviously, we haven't... Uh, Got full coverage of every uh, every sewer network, uh, but we're selective about uh, which networks that we uh, uh, we, we tackle, um, and we're always looking for for more opportunities to improve the local areas, rem eliminate all the odour in the uh, in the in the collection networks. I just wanted to touch on uh, some other systems that Netco have designed and built and supplied. Uh, this was one that I worked with uh, Nathan Nathan Cruikshank from Netco, uh, based in Queenstown in Tasmania. Sorry, Tasmania, <laughs> New Zealand, Queenstown in New Zealand. Um, it's it was at a beautiful location. So Queenstown is a I don't know whether whether you guys have been there, but it's a it's a fairly fairly tight little village because it's in it's in, in between some some really tall mountains uh with snow on top people go there to ski uh as you can see it's uh they're expanding up into into the valleys that are surrounding that that uh that town and they because of that they're going to need to collect uh wastewater from uh housing estates that they're building up in those valleys so those are quite long pumping mains they kind of uh in the order of 10 kilometers uh, a couple of days retention time, I think, uh, in some cases, uh, because the capacity that they've built on those pump stations is, is, is significant compared to the population, so they've overbuilt. Um, so that way, by the time the water gets pumped back into, into Queenstown, uh, into the treatment plant in the, in the actual Queenstown town, 
Uh, it can be it can be incredibly <laughs> it can be pretty horrible, pretty septic, um, really black. So um, the uh, this this system here, uh, it's uh, uh, it, it's a containerized unit. Uh, you can see inside that uh, there's a peristaltic pump, there's a recirculation pump, there's also a conical tank. Um, all the safety gear, where's the conical tank? There's the conical tank. Uh, so you can see the, uh, the the active mag is taken out of the bottom of the um, out of the bottom of the tank. It's recirculated back into the top. Um, we've got all the safety equipment on board. So there's uh, safety showers, there's there's wash stations, um, all kinds of solutions there. So it's it's fantastic. Um, so Net, Netco and, and Calix work together really well to provide simple solutions for, for odour uh, and that, that benefits your wastewater treatment process. Um, I did just see, I had Nathan calling me just then. I'm not sure whether he's wanting to hop on or not. Um, let me just check. Uh, we don't have any live chats at the moment. Um, let me just check what Nathan, no, he hasn't, he just left me a message. Um, Anyway, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get him on right now, uh, just because we're we're live and it's going to be a lot of mucking around while people wait. So we don't we don't want that to happen uh, while we're live on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to put in any any questions. So if you've got any questions, please drop them in the chat now. Um, I have noticed. I just checked. It it looks like uh, we haven't had any chats come in as yet. But if you've got any questions, I'd I'd love to answer them. Um, but as you can see, the uh, the the solutions. For odor control, uh, are very simple. They're, they're easy to implement. Um, they're they're cost effective, and they actually solve the problem with with minimal headaches. Uh, it brings significant benefits downstream to your wastewater treatment processes, but it also controls the the odor that's in your hydrogen in the hydrogen sulfide uh, uh, within the within the sewer network on the way to the treatment plant. Don't forget, there's uh, there's a number of webinars that we've done previously on whether it's odor control or phosphate control. There's a couple of different uh, uh, different solutions there. So if you've got a if you've got a specific problem that you're trying to uh, that you're trying to solve, whether it's phosphate capture, uh, whether it's pH or alkalinity adjustment, we've hopefully got a uh, a webinar that's on our YouTube channel, our Calix YouTube channel, that you can go back and have a look at. Uh, so please. Don't don't forget to uh, to jump online after this if you've if you've got a, a challenge on pH or, or phosphate those type of things or biogas. Uh, I did a, a great um, presentation on biogas a little while back that that detailed how you can how you can earn money um, from your wastewater system simply by digesting the uh, the the organics that are coming in and use ActiMag in order to in order to boost and maximise that biogas. So that brings us to the end of the uh, end of the presentation today. Um, hopefully, we'll keep this one uh, fairly short. I know the other ones have run for for like an hour, but half an hour is probably long enough for you guys to be uh, sitting here and and watching my ugly mug. Uh, let's just check if there's uh, any other any questions that have come in. So, Nicholas, hello from the US. Hello, Nicholas. Uh, how many gallons or liters per day are those little package units good for? So. The, uh, it just depends on uh, the, the the it depends on your system really. So we dose the the ActiMag. I'm going to use the, this in metric. I'm really sorry. I don't know. I don't have the con the uh, the conversions to uh, to US standard units off, off the top of my head. But um, uh, so we dose at a rate the ActiMag at a rate somewhere between 75 and 125 uh, kilograms per megaliter. Um, now that's that's probably not going to mean a whole lot to you in terms of in terms of pounds or gallons per um, uh, per. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know the unit that you use, uh, me mega gallons or something. Um, yeah. Uh, so the uh, the those units or the three hundred liter unit. Um, let me just do a quick conversion. Um, All right, so 300 litres is the equivalent of a, a roughly 80 gallon. Um, so one of one of those units on a say a small pump station would would last uh, can last up like one of the really small pump stations can last up to a month. Uh, usually the bigger pump stations that, that have got 
uh, a, a number of different branches coming in them, into them need to use a, uh, a, a 1,000 litre uh, dosing unit, which again, I'll do a quick conversion. Uh, it's roughly 260 uh, gallons, 264 gallons. Um, so one of, one of those units would serve a, uh, a pump station that has, say, three or four branches coming into it, collecting wastewater from a number of different branches. Once you get up to the, the larger trunk mains, you have to start looking at, at larger units. So you can see from... Um, we'll just go back to the, the presentation... Uh, you can see from, from one of the earlier slides here, there we go, so this, uh, this one was, uh, I believe it was a 4,000 4, litre unit, which was about, about a thousand gallon, um, would, uh, would provide enough for, uh, this, this one collected, uh, roughly about a quarter of the, the city, um, into the, it's a small city, Hobart, um, and it treated that, that, that wastewater coming from about a quarter of the city. Uh, if you're going for a much bigger city, then you're, you're going to need a bigger unit. So um, I'd be very happy to uh, have a chat with you afterwards to, to have a look at your specific systems uh, because it, it, it does change depending on on um, how much... Oh, you can do the conversions. All right, <laughs> fantastic. But I'd, I would love to have a chat with you about the uh, about your specific needs when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the systems that, that you've got in place uh, it would be great to uh, to touch base because we, we do have people over in the US we work with uh, IER uh, which is inland environmental resources they uh, we've actually we've, we've purchased them Calex actually purchased them not too long ago and we've got representatives uh, in the uh, the Midwest area uh, the western all along the western coast really and, and the Midwest. Uh, we are looking to expand even further, though. So, uh, if you need a solution, we've got people uh, in at least in the country. I'm not sure where you're located, but um, yeah, certainly we can we can work with you to to get a, a dosing unit and product uh, on your site, and you can do some testing and that that type of thing. So, um, maybe just drop your uh, your email in. It won't show up in the chat, but if you put your email in there, um, we can get back to you and uh, and get our our guys over in, in, in the US to, to to get in touch. Okay, well, if there's uh, no other questions, uh, we might finish up here and just say I hope you've enjoyed the the presentation. Uh, Netco and, and Nathan do an amazing job down in Tasmania in terms of solving the, the challenges that Taswater have got with, uh, have had, have had with, with odour control. Um, and the, the challenges with their chemical that they've, they've been you know, having challenges with blockages and stuff. So the expertise of, of Nathan and his engineers in terms of getting those systems working and functional um, and the, the Actimag chemical, which is doing a fantastic job in, in controlling that odour uh, all across Tasmania. So it'd be great, to, uh, be great to catch up in another webinar. Keep your eye out. We've got one. Uh, we've got a webinar later today, which is on uh, uh, Aquacal, which is around water, um, like lake rehabilitation, and that, those type of things. Uh, so it'll be and and also aquaculture, so if, uh, prawn farming, fish farming, and that type of thing. So if you're interested in that, you can you can dial in dial in on the that webinar this afternoon. But otherwise, uh, please keep your eye out for any more um, emails that we send out. In terms of uh, in terms of updates, so thank you very much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Calix sources magnesite from around Australia and around the world, including our mine site in South Australia at Myrtle Springs. We control the local supply chain, so that gives you confidence around continuity of supply. The next step within the process is we take this magnesite rock and we convert it into a powder for processing. The first step of the Calyx process involves taking the rock and grinding it and crushing it down to a very fine powder. We then sift that powder 
create a particle size distribution that's ideal for end product stability. This is the Calyx CFC Calciner. It produces an ultra high surface area magnesium oxide powder to create your products. It's also built around sustainable principles. So it has the capability to capture carbon dioxide as a part of the process. This technology is core to the Calyx purpose of solving global challenges being used to provide environmentally friendly products and has the potential to capture carbon emissions from industry. Calyx has ActiMag hydration plants like this around Australia and around the world. That way we can produce the ActiMag and magnesium hydroxide fresh for your process. It also means that we've got experts who know about the product locally in your area to help you along your journey to switch to ActiMag to maximise your process. Calyx sources magnesite from around Australia and around the world. 